so I'm here today to uh, present you um, one of the uh, projects I'm working on since a lot of time now, and especially all the updates uh, that have been made uh, since uh, last year. Uh, don't worry if you don't know the project, I will uh, make a small introduction uh, of what it is capable of uh, in the beginning of this presentation. <coughs> So um, who am I? So my name is uh, Quentin and I'm working here for uh, my own uh, company in Luxembourg and I have a background in incident response and all, let's say, the connected area to this, uh, to this field. So uh, what is it um, in image? Uh, so I just would like to make a quick poll uh, to the audience. Who is familiar with Sysmon? I mean, who already played with that? Okay, pretty nice. Who already like uh, deployed it in a corporate environment? Or, okay, cool. And uh, who deployed it in a, let's say, wide corporate environment? Okay, cool, two persons, nice. And sorry for you guys. <laughs> because it's quite painful. <laughs> um, so yeah, the EDR is uh, made of two components. So uh, the first one is installed on endpoints. So the endpoints might be a server, a laptop, a workstation, and it also need to uh, run uh, along with uh, Sysmon because it's actually consuming the logs. Uh, from Sysmon to uh, make its job. It can work without it, but it will be, of course, uh, less uh, efficient, let's say. So it can run in a standalone mode uh, on a single endpoint, but if you want to take a full advantage of it, you can also connect it to uh, what is called the EDR uh, manager. And from there, you can actually uh, pull the detection rules, uh, send uh, logs, send alerts, uh, but also send artifacts that the analyst can uh, used, uh, use for uh, analyzing an alert, for instance. But it can also be uh, used for uh, executing comments uh, on the endpoint. On the other side, uh, there is the EDR uh, manager, uh, which exposes two APIs, so one for uh, dedicated to the connection with endpoints, and another one dedicated to the communication with uh, you, uh, basically the administrator. And from there, you can uh, do a lot of things. So uh, managing the endpoints, uh, configuring the words to, you want to push to the endpoints, query the logs, uh, and so on. I will go uh, more into detail just uh, right now. So uh, what uh, is the agent capable of? So uh, its job is to continuously monitoring the logs and uh, it correlates them and enrich them uh, on the host. Um, it uh, applies detection rules uh, in uh, real time, either on uh, correlated or uh, the raw logs. And the good stuff is that uh, it's based on 100% uh, custom rules. So it means if there is no rule loaded in the engine, it will be very efficient in terms of CPU, but <laughs> it will not be very, uh, I mean, it will not be good for you security, let's say. Uh, the nice thing uh, is that it can react in real time to uh, the detection, and this is actually an important feature because it came from, uh, let's say, deep frustration when I was doing incident response is the latency between the detection and the time you can actually uh, run your investigation. Sometimes it can be hours, days, and yeah, everything is gone. So uh, you can decide uh, to uh, dump artifacts, uh, file process memory uh, and registry when it uh, concerns uh, registry uh, modification. Uh, directly, let's say, a couple of seconds uh, after the alert is triggered. You can also dump uh, informative information in a form of a nice uh, JSON report that your uh, analyst can actually use to uh, sort out uh, the alert. Um, it can also be used by automation, of course, uh, because there is a lot of information in there. Uh, you will see that in the next slide. And you can have some uh, 
reactive action like blacklisting the process or uh, killing the process. So blacklisting the process will prevent the process to run again. And as I said uh, earlier, the manager is uh, able to, uh, okay, I thought I had more information on that slide, um, is able to, um, yeah, manage the endpoints, uh, the logs, and uh, the artifact, and also expose this uh, very nice API that you can use to uh, administrate your uh, endpoints, but also create uh, plugins. We will see that a bit later as well. So yes, I did set reports. Uh, what it is, um, these are the reports that I was uh, talking about, the one that uh, you would like to use uh, as an incident responder, and it contains basically all you like, uh, you would like to have uh, while doing incident response. So it contains a snapshot, I mean, not a sn physical snapshot of the process, but a snapshot of the information of the process. So the command lines, the hash, all the DLLs loaded and their hashes, uh, the ancestor of that uh, command, the last file open, the connection made by that process, the DNS resolutions, also contain all the drivers uh, loaded uh, since the beginning, since the boot of the machine, and all the DLLs ever loaded on this machine. Um, all this information can be uh, generated instantly because it's uh, basically a structure which is maintained in memory while the events are basically flowing through the engine. So it takes like uh, less than, than a second to generate all that information. So it's, it's very interesting to, to have this and you can even imagine to query this, uh, this to make, to issue that command like very frequently to, to gather this information. Uh, and you can also, in, the, in those reports, you can configure some commands uh, you would like to run. I'm, thinking about OS query commands, for instance, in order to them specific OS query tables, uh, uh, which might provide more information, uh, which are not in this, uh, in this report. So there are some of the features uh, provided by the, um, the EDR. Uh, on the endpoint, uh, you can uh, have canary files, uh, which come in two variants, so uh, you can either configure it in order to uh, the EDR to generate uh, dummy canary files and generate also the alerts when those canary are touched. But you can also use existing file on your file system which will generate alerts uh, when they are touched uh, by any process. You can also uh, manage and configure some Windows uh, audit policies directly from the, um, from the EDR configuration. And uh, you can do a lot of things like uh, changing the log channel you want to uh, listen to if you, if you have like specific rule, custom needs. Uh, yeah, basically I've made the thing so that almost everything is customizable. Uh, on the manager side, you can do uh, interesting t stuff like querying the logs and the alerts, uh, pivot on, uh, on uh, timestamps. It's not as powerful as a Splunk or Elastic, but at least it has some uh, basic functionality uh, to retrieve logs and uh, in, um, let's say, in an efficient way. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's pretty fast. Uh, you can also... Um, use what is called detection reports, which provides you an aggregated view of the alerts you have seen on endpoints. And this can be used actually to rank the endpoints uh, between, uh, between them and then prioritize your uh, analysis. There are uh, also the artifact storage. Um, uh, yeah, it, it acts as an artifact storage uh, to store all the information which are dumped on the endpoints, and you can obviously write scripts or uh, query those uh, information in order to uh, either uh, make your incident response uh, more efficient, or you can imagine to put some automation on top of that, I don't know, sending the files in a sandbox or uh, checking IOCs in MISP uh, and things like that. There is a feature um, which is even streaming. It uh, it goes through a WebSocket, so you just need to connect to a WebSocket and you receive all the events in real time. 
So if you have 100 endpoints connected to the, to the manager, when they send event to the manager, everything will flow to the, through the WebSocket and you will receive those events. So it can be very interesting if you want to uh, develop some plugin that needs uh, some real-time information. We have such an example uh, just below. Uh, which is uh, the sightings.py uh, plugin that updates the misp attribute sightings uh, on a given uh, misp instance. One can also imagine to use that uh, feature to feed whatever uh, database you want or uh, log search uh, engine like Splunk or uh, Elastic. And uh, final uh, usage is to write plugins. So or there are three plugins developed for the moment. So one to push the reports to a uh, MISP instance, uh, one to uh, update the sightings, and one to synchronize IOCs with uh, a MISP instance. So we have uh, reviewed all the current feature. Uh, I guess I forgot some of them, so if you want to have a better view, I invite you to take a look to the project and to play a bit with it. So now, what's new? Uh, there is a better um, action granularity, I would say. Uh, previously, it was uh, implemented in such a way that uh, actions would be taken based on the crit criticality of the alerts. So it meant that above a given criticality threshold, it would run this and this and this action. But now you can be even more granular, so you can configure that on a rule basis. So this is an example of a rule, so it also gives you what a rule uh, looks like. And this one is uh, simply uh, detecting when a given process, which is process ID 1 of uh, Sysmon, that you can see. Uh, it doesn't work uh, on the on the top, and uh, yeah, basically it matches every process that contains uh, SVC host in its image name, but is not the legitimate uh, SVC host uh, process. And you can say, okay, for this specific uh, event when it triggers, this specific alert when it triggers, I want to create a report, file dump, mem dump, kill the process, and finally blacklist it, and. These are all the actions which are implemented in the EDR for the moment, and there are two slight difference between the report and the brief. Uh, I separated those because the brief actually dumps all this uh, very quick information uh, stored in memory, while the reports will also run the commands, which might take uh, more time. So it might be a good option uh, if you have a lower criticality uh, to just enable the brief instead of the report if you don't want like a big report at every alert. Um, there is a brand new uh, tool management which is included in this uh, EDR now. So as I said earlier, it's using in extensively uh, Sysmon and OS Query. Uh, so until now, you had to connect to the machine, install OS Query, deploy Sysmon, configure Sysmon, everything uh, to be done manually uh, on the endpoint. And I decided to deport that uh, on the EDR uh, manager. So now you can deploy OS Query, deploy Sysmon. But uh, the best feature is also to manage the Sysmon configuration uh, from remote. And uh, yeah, because I experience, as you guys, uh, how it's painful to deploy Sysmon in a corporate environment. Um, yeah, basically, you just have to send the XML, Sysmon XML configuration to that API, and boom, it parses it and uh, configure all the endpoints with the, the good uh, the good configuration you just sent. There is also a new IOC management. Uh, until now, uh, there was a way to push IOCs to the endpoints, but it was uh, really strongly type, tight sorry, to a uh, MISP. Uh, we had to configure a MISP instance uh, on the manager, and it would like uh, take the IOCs from that MISP instance and then push them uh, to the Actually, it's not pushing because the agent is pulling. Uh, the agent would pull the IOCs from the, the manager. Um, 
But yes, it was not very flexible because it was uh, firstly uh, depending on uh, MISP and was not extensible because uh, this uh, manager is coded in Golang and yeah, it's not very uh, convenient to uh, patch uh, to patch Golang code uh, to add new uh, data source. So I decided to deport that into uh, an API as well. Uh, so that basically you just push your IOCs uh, directly uh, on that API and uh, those get uh, pushed uh, then to the to the endpoints. So uh, yes, to uh, again have the um, the feature with uh, MISP, uh, I developed the simple plugin which is called Sync IOCs and that takes um, a configuration file. Uh, that connects to a MISP instance and pushes the IOCs uh, to the to the manager. So you can run one single instance of this script per uh, MISP uh, you want to connect uh, to the to the manager. So this is an example of uh, the output of the the, the API basically. And uh, there is not much meaning about like the, I mean, it's not used the, the type of the IOCs, uh, inside the, the EDR, for instance. It's just, uh, if you want to search, uh, on the API, you can use this type to select the IOC you would like to, I don't know, delete or, uh, modify. Um, so there is also a brand new, uh, central agent, uh, configuration, uh, until now, Again, uh, same thing as uh, it was with uh, Sysmon and OS Query. When we had to do a modification in the configuration of uh, the agent, we had to connect on the machine and edit the configuration file. So this has been deported as well inside the an API. And uh, now everything uh, can be controlled from uh, the central manager, which makes the, thing, the things uh, more consistent and less painful to manage. Uh, this was also a big block of implementation. Uh, it's the ETW support uh, on agent side. Uh, uh, who knows about ETW here? Okay. Uh, so for those who don't know, it's uh, basically a superset of uh, logs uh, that a superset of EVTX logs. Uh, uh, on Windows, it's basically the technology Windows is using to uh, to manage uh, logs. And previously, I was basically hooking the event a bit uh, further in the chain through the EVT-like uh, API family, and uh, this approach suffered from uh, several... Um, Things. Um, so it was first vulnerable to an attack which is called Invoke Phantom. I don't know if you if you noticed it. It was already a while ago, but it was suspending the Windows log service, and uh, yeah, it also stops uh, every uh, even consumer using this uh, EVT like uh, API family. So ETW is also nice because it's closer to the kernel and offers uh, best speed. Uh, so now the agent is uh, much more performant. And it's also more flexible because uh, you can uh, select uh, the fields you might want to parse and also you can decide to um, kick out uh, some events really early in the process of parsing. So yeah, again, it's a better uh, performance. And uh, important as well, it uh, brings more visibility um, to the, I mean, to the de detection team because it offers, um, you, you have access to much more information. Not everything goes to the EVTX uh, channels in Windows. There is also an improved documentation uh, that has been done. Uh, it's a open API documentation of the management API. So it's run on top of Golang tests. Uh, so it enables um, the, the EDR to test the APIs at the same time as generating the documentation. So it's run um, 
through a git hook. So it means that if the test don't pass, the first it's not committed and the documentation is not generated. So you also, have, you always have an up to date, uh, open API file with, uh, the commit that you find on the, on the GitHub repo. Another improved documentation is the comments that you can run on the, um, on the endpoints, uh, which is generated automatically. So yeah, I don't know if it works. No, I cannot switch. It doesn't work. Um, so yeah, it documents all the commands you can, you can run, uh, on the endpoints and updates the documentation on the GitHub page. So this is just, uh, some extract of the command you can, you can run. So for instance, this OS query command is an alias to OS query, uh, to dump a table, uh, in JSON. Uh, there was a lot of uh, hidden work that has been done uh, this past year. Uh, I say hidden because it doesn't bring uh, no new features. It's only uh, basically improving the code, uh, such as like getting rid of all the on disk configuration, which was uh, still remaining on the config on the manager side. So now uh, everything is deported again to an HTTP API and it's more flexible and uh, yeah, less painful to administrate. Um, something that took me a lot of time as well is to uh, develop a proper uh, CI CD uh, pipeline because I'm developing on Linux and all this run on Windows. So yeah, it's not very easy to, uh, let's say to, um, to glue together. Um, yeah, all the R&D behind, uh, this is, uh, quite painful because, uh, sometimes I spend, yeah, I, I put days, but we, we can say weeks, uh, testing out stuff and yeah, it will just never see the light. So this is very frustrating. Um, but yeah, that, that's what it is. <laughs> and, um, finally, um, I also have to develop, fix, and improve all the dependencies of that project, which start to be uh, quite big uh, now. So yeah, this is a, a list of all the dependencies. And yeah, I, I didn't precise, but all this uh, code is uh, public uh, as well on the on the GitHub of the company. So what's next uh, about this project? So finalize the release, which is like pending since, uh, hey, hey too long now, uh, publish some uh, how-tos, blog posts, and uh, I'd like to make some uh, also real use case with uh, attack or uh, detect, uh, or dissecting, yeah, dissecting attacks or uh, running a malware sample and create detection rules. Uh, on the longer term, I would like to continue developing this project, uh, but also try to port it to other uh, operating system, uh, such as uh, Linux or Darwin based system. Uh, it's not very easy because there is no real uh, framework that allows you to get the same amount of information that you get in Sysmon, even though there is a Sysmon for Linux. Yeah, it doesn't seem very well maintained. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't trust that project for the moment. Uh, yeah, so it's really a lot of work, I guess. And also write uh, more plugins uh, to uh, integrate other open source tool to uh, that, uh, that project. You might wonder how you can help. So uh, you can develop a graphical interface if you are comfortable with this. <laughs> You can uh, use the tool, test it, uh, give feedback, good or bad, I, I don't care. Uh, you can make feature requests, give feedbacks, talk about it, give feedbacks. I'm trying to do inceptions now. Um, so yeah, uh, if you if you don't want to do that, you can still contribute to the code, uh, either to the main, uh, the core, let's say, or uh, to the plugin. And yeah, give feedback. And if you don't have time for all this, uh, you can still uh, sponsor the project on GitHub. Or yeah, if you have money you don't know what to do with, you can sponsor. 
thank you all for being here, and thank you, uh, Alex and uh, uh, Jean-Louis, and uh, yeah, all the guys who believed in this project since uh, the beginning. Thank you, and it's Q and A time. Any questions, complaint, idea? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, I know that it's based on Sysmon and XATW, but uh, a nice feature of commercial solution of, is uh, uh, API hooking. Any plans on implement something like that? To implement what, sorry? Uh, API hooking. API hooking. Uh, yeah, to be honest, it's a nice uh, debate. Uh, we, we had this discussion with Alex and Jean-Louis uh, last week. I don't really want to do that because, it, first of all, it's very intrusive because you inject a DLL inside every process running. And secondly, it's like uh, user mode hooking, which is not very interesting because if the malware is smart enough, it just unhooks the thing. So, yeah, it's a, it's a technology which is uh, extensively used in uh, common uh, EDR, but to be honest, I don't think it's uh, very, uh, very useful uh, because it suffers uh, this uh, vulnerability. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Again, thank you very much. Thank you. Great project, thank you.